Gravitation Introduction The moon goes around the earth. In all these cases, there must be some force acting on the objects, the planets, and on the moon. Isaac Newton could grasp that the same force is responsible for all these. This force is called the gravitational force. We shall learn about gravitation and the universal law of gravitation. We shall discuss the motion of objects under the influence of gravitational force on the earth. Second law of motion. A force is needed to change the speed or the direction of motion of an object. We always observe that an object dropped from a height falls towards the earth. We know that all the planets go around the sun. Universal law of gravitation. Every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force which is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. The force is along the line joining the centers of the two objects. Let two objects A and B of masses M and small m lie at a distance D from each other as shown. In figure, let the force of attraction between two objects be F. According to the universal law of gravitation, the force between two objects is directly proportional to the product of their masses. That is, F is equal to capital M into small m. The derivation for universal gravitational constant G is obtained as shown. Importance of Universal Law The universal law of gravitation successfully explained several phenomena which were believed to be unconnected. 1. The force that binds us to the earth. 2. The motion of the moon around the earth. 3. The motion of planets around the sun. And 4. The tides due to the moon and the sun. Free Fall Take a stone Throw it upwards. It reaches a certain height and then it starts falling down. Whenever objects fall towards the earth under this force alone, we say that the objects are in free fall. Is there any change in the velocity of falling objects? While falling, there is no change in the direction of motion of the objects. But due to the earth's attraction, there will be a change in the magnitude of the velocity. Any change in velocity involves acceleration. Whenever an object falls towards the earth, an acceleration is involved. This acceleration is due to the earth's gravitational force. Therefore, this acceleration is called the acceleration due to the gravitational force of the earth or acceleration due to gravity. It is noted by G. The unit of G is the same as that of acceleration, that is, m s to the power of minus 2. Let the mass of the stone in activity be m. We already know that there is acceleration involved in falling objects due to the gravitational force and is denoted by g. Therefore, the magnitude of the gravitational force f will be equal to the product of mass and acceleration due to the gravitational force as shown above, where m is the mass of the earth and d is the distance between objects and the earth. Objects under gravitational force. Take a sheet of paper and a stone. Drop them simultaneously from the first floor of a building. Observe whether both of them reach the ground simultaneously. We see that paper reaches the ground a little later than the stone. If we do the experiment in a glass jar from which air has been sucked out, the paper and the stone would fall at the same rate. An object experiences acceleration during freefall. This acceleration experienced by an object is independent of its mass. This means that all objects, hollow or solid, big or small, should fall at the same rate. As g is constant near the earth, all the equations for the uniformly accelerated motion of objects become valid with acceleration a 
replaced by G. The equations are shown above, where U and V are the initial and final velocities and S is the distance covered in time T. Mass The mass of an object is the measure of its inertia. Greater the mass, the greater is the inertia. It remains the same whether the object is on the earth, the moon or even in outer space. Thus, the mass of an object is constant and does not change from place to place. Weight The weight of an object is the force with which it is attracted towards the earth. We know that F is equal to M into A, that is, F is equal to M into G. The force of attraction of the earth on an object is known as the weight of the object. It is denoted by W. Substituting the same in equation, we have W is equal to M into G. Weight of an object on the moon. The weight of an object on the moon is the force with which the moon attracts that object. The mass of the moon is less than that of the earth. Due to this, the moon exerts lesser force of attraction on objects. Let the mass of an object be M. Let its weight on the moon be Wm. Let the mass of the moon be M, small m, and its radius be R, M. By applying the universal law of gravitation, the weight of the object on the moon will be equation 1. Let the weight of the same object on the earth be We. The mass of the earth is M and its radius is R. Equation 2. Substituting the values from table in equations 1 and 2, we get equation 3 and 4 as shown above. Dividing equation 3 by equation 4, we get weight of the object on the moon by weight of the object on the earth is equal to 1 by 6. Weight of the object on the moon is equal to 1 by 6 the whole into its weight on the earth. Thrust and pressure. If we push hard on a piece of wood with our thumb, the thumb does not go into the wood. But if we push a drawing pin into the wood with the same force of our thumb, the drawing pin goes into the wood. These observations can be explained as follows. Our thumb does not go into the wood because the force of the thumb is falling on a large area of the wood due to which the force per unit area or pressure on the wood is small. The drawing pin goes into the wood because due to the sharp tip of the drawing pin, the force of the thumb is falling on a very small area of the wood due to which the force per unit area or pressure on the wood becomes very large. It is clear from this example that pressure is the force acting on a unit area of the object. Here, it is wood. Thus, the effect of a force depends on the area of the object on which it acts. Thrust and pressure You wish to fix a poster on a bulletin board, as shown in figure. To do this task, you will have to press drawing pins with your thumb. You apply a force on the surface area of the head of the pin. This force is directed perpendicular to the surface area of the board. This force acts on a smaller area at the tip of the pin. To fix a poster, drawing pins are pressed with the thumb perpendicular to the board. Buoyancy Take an empty plastic bottle. Close the mouth of the bottle with an airtight stopper. Put it in a bucket filled with water. You see that the bottle floats. Push the bottle into the water. You feel an upward push. Try to push it further down. You will find it difficult to push deeper. This indicates that water exerts a pressure on the bottle in the upward direction. The force exerted by the water goes on increasing as the bottle is pushed deeper till it is completely immersed. Now, release the bottle. It bounces back to the surface. The force due to the gravitational attraction of the earth acts on the bottle in the downward direction. So, the bottle is pulled downwards, but the water exerts an upward force on the bottle. Thus, the bottle is pushed upwards. All objects experience a force of buoyancy when they are immersed in a fluid. 
the magnitude of this buoyant force depends on the density of the fluid. Float and sink experiment. Collect different substances at home like iron, nail, ring, plastic buttons, coin, wooden chunk, leaf, etc. and put them one after another in a glass or bucket of water. Observe and record your findings whether the substance floats or sinks in water. Some of the items dropped reach the bottom of the vessel and then start floating. Some of them reach the bottom and do not raise up to the surface. Iron nail, ring, etc. sink to the bottom whereas wood, plastic, etc. float on the top. Thus we infer that materials that have densities less than that of water float in water and those with greater densities sink in water. Archimedes Principle Take a piece of stone and tie it to one end of a rubber string or a spring balance. Suspend the stone by holding the balance or the string. Note that the elongation of the string or the reading on the spring balance due to the weight of the stone. Now, slowly dip the stone in the water in a container. Observe the elongation of the rubber string due to the weight of a piece of stone suspended from it in air. The elongation decreases as the stone is immersed in water. Observe what happens to elongation of the string or the reading on the balance. You will find that the elongation of the string or the reading of the balance decreases as the stone is gradually lowered in the water. However, on further change is observed once the stone gets fully immersed in the water. The elongation produced in the string or the spring balance is due to the weight of the stone. Since the extension decreases once the stone is lowered in water, it means that some force acts on the stone in upward direction. As a result, the net force on the string decreases. Relative Density the density of a substance is defined as a mass of a unit volume. The unit of density is kilogram per meter cube. The relative density of a substance is the ratio of its density of that of water. Relative density is equal to density of a substance divided by density of water. Since the relative density is a ratio of similar quantities, it has no unit.